I'll be reacting to Great Pretender episode 8, and I'm starting my reaction in one, zero, go. All right. Wonder how they're gonna follow up the strong seventh episode. Hmm. That's actually a good question. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Probably wants. Probably wants to, huh? I mean, if he's gonna wanna, he's probably gonna wanna find details about the past. <sighs> Cam Lammer. I'm gonna inject him. Oh! But is she gonna. I wonder if she's gonna actually break that thing. I wonder. <laughs> Alright, good. Zero BS. Person. Oh. <laughs> hey, hey, at least he's. <laughs> Hey, at least there he's somewhat trying to fight his fears, although knowing how Makoto usually operates, he probably didn't factor that into his planning. But you know, I actually love that though. You actually see him trying to... Hey, you know, that could explain the symbolism in the opening because you do see someone that has... Ma see that guy that has Makoto silhouette trying to swim towards where... Abby's swimming. Yeah, so. Hmm. So I wonder if that's gonna symbolize. Yeah, it's probably gonna symbolize that he's gonna have quite a rough time when it comes to interacting with Abby. I just wonder who's the long haired girl, though, because we see a long haired um, woman in the open and we also see them in the ED, too. Hmm. Singapore Sky 2.3. Talk about getting one, getting even more ambitious. Hmm. I don't think Abby's gonna want to do that though. It's not flawless. I like how she's not even mentioned the fact that her pride might get in the way of it all. <laughs> I love the look of Kato's making of disgust. <laughs> oh snap. Ah, oh, roulette. That gives me some fucking slight PTSD vibes. I've lost not that much, but I've lost a bit in the past due to playing the roulette for quite a bit. Gives me some um, <laughs> negative vibes. Whoa! Holy damn! Makoto probably should have used different words. He's gonna get hit big time. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Oh, poor ball, Makoto.
Man, that was some pretty... thing about that is, shit, it's going to pull a lot of heat into Koto. Hmm. Still more, I'm assuming it's going to be more than to it than just to that. Mm-hmm. Damn, I'm a man of business. Can't blame him, though. Can't blame him for wanting blood, though. I mean, it's considering he's permanently, you know, he's permanently injured. I can't blame him for that. Yeah, had a feeling he wanted to go in for the cult because of that. You know, Isabella seems really, really sweet too, to be sticking out. Sticking out for her man despite the rough conditions. Actually, that's actually pretty cool. Hmm. So that's how they're going to do it. Pretty sly there. Hmm. I'm assuming Clark... I'm assuming Clark Sproul is going to have some suspicions. Because he looks all tense. You know, he's saying that, but... And the way this guy can say it's so easily like that. You know, that puts the question with the way Clark is, um... Facial expressions with the eyebrows. I wonder if that implies that his brother... ...does all this sabotaging... ...without telling Clark anything about it, because... ...you know, there is that possibility there. Because he... Clark looks completely mindfucked right now. Ah, he's close. <laughs> he was close. To the name. Just missed the moral part. <laughs> hmm. 
Man, Isabel actually did a pretty dang great job. <laughs> oh. All right, Lauren, um, she went a shot. <laughs> I can't blame him though. Damn. I mean, but then again, I can't completely blame Louise considering the accident is really, really recent and the pain and trauma. Pride. Even though he says it's my business, it probably has to do with pride. He just probably wanted to win. That's what I'm gonna assume. But is that truly... Is wanting to win truly refusing to... Grow up, though? Because I think wanting to keep integrity with the sport is another way of growing up. You know? It just depends on the perspective of the individual. That's the... He's actually right, the brother. Clark has to keep his... Uh, Clark has to should keep his guard up. Oh! That's the thing Clark's brother's not considering. Brother's feelings of his own brother because you gotta think about it. There is gonna come time where Clark is gonna wanna do something decently when it comes to racing. Hmm. <laughs> Damn, he's quick! <laughs> oh! Just sucks that they have the strength of numbers, though. It's the unfortunate thing. Man, he, he's never lucky. <laughs> they at least they didn't take his life or anything like that. Who's gonna want to borrow Abby? Oh wait, never mind. I was wrong. Okay. If you like it, we're gonna see the culmination of those months of freedoms that Makoto's had here. Alrighty. And that's what I like. Whenever you have whenever you have a character practice the craft, on occasions enemies sometimes don't bother showing off those fruits of the Fruits of a character's labor when it comes to them practicing something. But I like how here, though, they're actually showing the effects of all the Tangry Makoto's done over the last few months. I actually enjoy stuff like that. 
Because a lot of series take that type of shit for granted. As an example, there's an anime called The Eighth Son. Are you kidding me? And the anime had like literally a full episode of characters training only for, for a tournament, only to skip all the tournament fights. Wasting the buildup. I like how here though, that built up a few episodes ago and they executed by it. Actually showing Makoto put his skills up to the test and actually succeed. And increasing the speed of Clark's vehicle. So I actually really, really dig that. Hmm. <laughs> oh. And I like, you can start to just have a feel that Makoto, unlike the first arc where he didn't have much confidence in himself, he's getting much more confident. He's got much more swagger. I actually like these bits of character development. Hmm. At least he's admitting it. That doesn't make it right though to be a bad guy. <laughs> Oh. Hmm. This is probably just... Damn. To think Lauren would plan this shit that deeply. I'm actually really damn impressed. and then Makoto, my goodness. You should try to take a career up in acting. It's becoming unnatural. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. I can't blame the man for being cautious though. I'd probably be the same way. Okay, that man looks so off with the hat like that. <laughs> Feels like I'm looking at almost an entirely different person. Kind of wish they would have um, shown off uh, how they actually set all the casino stuff off the. It's the only thing in the episode that I. But other than that, I've been digging everything else though. Just out of curiosity. Hmm. <laughs> 
Oh, so he wasn't in on it? <laughs> okay, I take that back with Makoto's um, actually improving his acting skills. <laughs> this still dragging him along and just going with the whole, let's have this fucker just do ad lib for most of it. <laughs> oh, man. I love stuff like that, though. Makes the series feel much more dying. Wait, that it's over? Alrighty. Okay. Actually really dug this episode. I'm gonna rate this one straight up and 8.25 out of 10. I thought it was thoroughly entertaining. And while it wasn't as astounding as say the previous episode where we were getting like glimpses of Abby's past and all that. I thought I did enough to still be pretty dang good because for one, we get to see more characterization for Clark Sproul where I'm actually surprised he straight up admitted he's a fucking dad and run into the core individual. I was like, okay. <laughs> that kind of makes him a bit scarier and fright and much more of a frightening character because all things considered, anyone that can admit that about themselves is gonna be a stab it is gonna be a savage if they find out they're being betrayed. So that's gonna help them making future episodes much more intense and him actually giving out that line. And I also like how you get some characterization for Clark. This episode pretty much implies that is that he probably does know about his brother's schemes, but Clark is probably getting sick and tired of having these wins just hand, handed down to him on a silver platter. So that's another thing I enjoyed too. And another element too is they're already having a plan of having Abby give up the, the race, but I just wonder though, is she actually gonna stick to the script or is she actually gonna try to win? It's one I'm gonna wonder. Because we just saw it just a few episodes ago. She wasn't gonna give up a match. Yeah, she lost, but she wanted to straight up win a match. So that's another interesting angle in this episode that makes you wonder if Abby's gonna just go into like loose cannon mode in one of the future episodes because you know it's her personality it's pretty fiery she's pretty prideful so yeah can't wait how they're gonna handle that angle and on top of that what I also really enjoy about this episode too was the character development from Makoto because he's at the very least like, getting better with actually playing along with the script because in the first arc you can see he was nervous just trying to pull things off here you can see he's got much more self-confident the winking I just love it you can tell he's got that swagger now and that's what I really love character growth and character progression and then on top of that what I also really dig about this episode too was even though, while well, yes, Makoto is much more on form, you still have Lauren yanking our, yanking our poor boy by the figurative chain like that, and that's fucking <laughs> like hilarious. So all in all, that gives the dialogue in this episode a lot more life, it makes it much more dynamic. And then on top of that, I like how you have Abby give, having those figurative walls in her heart, not wanting to give anything about herself to our main man, Makoto. That was actually pretty interesting. And it's going to make you wonder how it's going to work with her and Makoto. I'm assuming that she's probably going to trust Makoto a bit more as they do more missions together. That's going to be my guess. But I could be completely wrong though. But anyways, that's, a, that's an interesting dynamic that I can't wait to see explored there. And that's why I thought this episode did exceptionally well from a character standpoint. And we got to see beautiful Cynthia get all pissed off. Especially when she punched the pillow that her poor Mokutsu was holding. That was actually pretty damn hilarious. So a lot of great character moments. Character development. And none of the moments were dull. And the animation art was pretty dang beautiful. And it was a build-up episode. Most animes... They would fucking stop trying and build up episodes and they wouldn't even bother giving good visuals. Studio Wits like, nah, fuck that. We're gonna make things look pretty. Even if it's a build up sequence, they'll still make it look pretty. And I gotta say, gotta give the animators a, 
a standing ovation for that because uh, that's badass and I will have seen that extra effort. And that's why I feel this episode, at least from from my ratings, I'm going to give it straight up a 8.25 out of 10. And that's why I really, really dug it. But anyways, y'all. These are my thoughts on Great Pretender Episode 8. Be sure to comment down your thoughts how you feel, on how you feel about my reaction in the comment section below. Rate the bid, share it, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later if you come back for more. Because I'm definitely pumped to see what they're going to have next. But anyways, y'all, thanks so much for watching my video, and have a great and safe day, everyone. Bye-bye.